Hello and welcome to worship as we gather together for the third Sunday after Easter. Now the uh, title for this Sunday, as you know I always like to use the historic names for these Sundays, uh, our name for today is Misericordia Domini. Uh, the best translation of that is uh, the steadfast love of the Lord or the mercy of the Lord. And uh, yeah, beautiful title for today. And that comes from our intro, it, which you'll be hearing in just a little while. Uh, we're going to begin with our hymn of invocation, which is number 685, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. Number 685. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you have fallen under the mercy of the Lord and have given your repentant confession just now, then hear the good news that the blood of the Lamb has purchased for you. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro it for today is drawn upon Psalm 33. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Alleluia. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. Alleluia. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Alleluia. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. Alleluia. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for Misericordia Domini Sunday is from the prophet Ezekiel, the 34th chapter. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries. And I will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture. And on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and... On rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from First Peter, chapter 2. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like straying sheep, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our hymn of the day for today is hymn number 709, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Number 709.
grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ah, it's Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our sermon title for today is The True Shepherd, and it's based on all of these readings, actually, from today. So, dear brothers and sisters, all metaphors aside, I need to admit that I don't love sheep. Growing up on my farm, I was always thankful that I had only cows, pigs, and chickens for the most part on our farm. A couple of our neighbors had, and some still have, sheep. Never, ever in my life have I seen animals so constantly in need of help. Sheep are, generally speaking, stupid, stubborn, easily panicked, and generally just a pain to look after. They need a shepherd all the time. In our gospel for today, Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. And truly, he is the good shepherd, for none other than him can fulfill the role. So Jesus, being the shepherd of his people, is a fulfillment of the Old Testament. As that Old Testament reading from Ezekiel says, For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. God will search out his lost sheep and will return them back to himself. Now in our gospel for today, as I said, Jesus identifies himself as that good shepherd, as the one doing the seeking and the leading. That is to say, the true shepherd of the people of God is nothing less than the Lord God himself. And by stating this, Jesus is telling his disciples and us that he is God. However, although the Son is equal to the Almighty Father, he's been given a specific mission. The Father sent him for this purpose, that he gives us his life as a ransom, as the only complete sacrifice for the sake of all sinners who have earned nothing but eternal damnation. He has become our substitute. He took upon our, himself our transgressions and died in our place. Thus, the guilty, the sinners, were delivered from sin and destruction. The mission of the Son is to rescue his lost flock from certain death and destruction. And as Almighty God the Father sent him, Jesus Christ, in turn, has sent his church to accomplish this mission, to go and find the scattered sheep and gather them into the fold of the Lord until his return in glory. And that mission is still underway today. We are told to continue to gather, to spread the good news of Jesus' life and works for us, and minister to our fellow lost sheep. In our creeds, we confess our belief in one holy, universal, and apostolic Christian church. The church today is holy because it is instituted by Christ himself. And just as Jesus began the church by sending out the disciples to the four corners of the earth, it continues to be holy by the working of the Holy Spirit, who gives us faith in Jesus, marking us as holy children of God through baptism. And the church is truly universal. Even as we meet in a physical building for in-person worship or here over the internet, we are gathered together as part of an invisible, universal church that encompasses all believers in Jesus. So no matter where you are, you have, by the blood of Jesus, the water of baptism, and the power of the Holy Spirit, been made one with the body of Christ. And the church today is apostolic in this sense. By the mandate of our Lord, it must call and ordain ministers to preach the word of God and administer the sacraments in the manner that the Lord has commanded us. That is the pastoral office. Now, there's three words, I mean, there's at least three words, that are found in the New Testament for the pastoral office, but there's three key ones. One is uh, poimen, which is translated as pastor. 
Another is presbyteros, which is translated as elder. And in our epistle that we just heard for today, 1 Peter, we find this one, which is identified as a title of Christ Jesus as well. For if you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. The Greek word there is episkopos, which means supervisor, overseer, guide. Well, in the New Testament, just to keep things kind of confused, these words are used without distinction. There are no ranks among the ministers of the church instituted by God. All ministers preach with the same authority, which is, of course, the word of Christ. However, later in the history of the church, the title of bishop was reserved for the leader of a Christian community in one city. For example, you have the bishop of Jerusalem, the bishop of Rome. With the development of a hierarchy, suddenly bishops were turned into princes or lords of the church. And because of its historical link to the abuse of power in the church, some of our Lutheran churches, like our own here, avoid the title bishop entirely for the most part. We're trying to bring it back, but it's difficult because of that baggage that it brings with it. There are other Lutheran denominations that allow for its use in the sense of supervisors of pastors. And I would have personally no qualms about calling both Pastor Trembulak my bishop and uh, Pastor Bublitz my bishop. Anyway, to lord it over the church, though, is not the model that Jesus gave to all of those who bear the name of pastor as his assistants in this grand work or great work that we've been given in the commission. And for that purpose, he also puts himself in deliberate contrast with hired hands. Such hirelings whose only concern is money and the desire to take their ease in Zion have no interest in the souls of men that are entrusted to their care. They're strictly mercenary and will work only if their lives and welfare seem safe. And at the first sign of the wolf, at the first sign of real danger or of possible or probable persecution, suffering and even martyrdom, well then of course they hasten to flee, leaving the sheep to disperse and be killed by their enemies. But, you know, as an employee, they don't care. They have no worries, no anxiety, no interest in the sheep. But with their master as the example, the true pastors of the church do not flee in difficult times. With the help of God, they are willing to give their lives for the sheep if necessary. They are faithful to their Lord and his word. Therefore, the sheep are sure and certain that when the pastor announces in the stead and by the command of our Lord the complete forgiveness of sins, it is the voice of Christ, the good shepherd, who is speaking. And in this confidence, we have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. We continue by confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Good Shepherd of Israel, who has sought out his sheep and gathered us with them into one flock, would keep us always in his fold and guard us from every wolf and snare, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all pastors, that God would bestow Christ's own wisdom and tenderness upon those called to shepherd the souls of his people and all believers, that they might receive their pastors as a gift from the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our homes, that Christ would give them peace and enliven them with his resurrected life, 
that he would cause the forgiveness of sins to reign among husbands and wives, parents and children, and that he would assure those who live alone that they too are his children, upheld by his right hand. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of good government, that as the Paschal Lamb has wrought peace between man and God, so we would grant peace and good days also to our citizens and to the nations of the world, and that we and all our neighbors may lead quiet lives in godly contentment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, especially those we now name in our hearts before you. That you would grant healing, relief, peace, comfort, and grace sufficient for all our needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, out of your fatherly goodness, you have remembered us poor, miserable sinners and given your beloved Son to be our shepherd, not only to nourish us by his word, but also to defend us from sin, death, and the devil. Grant us your Holy Spirit that, even as this shepherd knows us and helps in every affliction, that we may also know him, trust him, seek help and comfort in him, heartily obey his voice, and obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that in steadfast faith we may serve you and, in the confession of your name, abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Our hymn to depart today is number 474. Alleluia, Jesus is risen. 474. Thank you. 
risen indeed. Hallelujah. God bless you all in your week. Thank you for coming and being a part of Misericordias Domini, the mercy of the Lord, the steadfast love of the Lord. May you bask in that love this week and through all the rest of your days. Amen.